we're gonna need a bigger budget. <laughs> Steven Spielberg's Jaws went on to invent the summer blockbuster alongside Star Wars from his pal George Lucas, which arrived two years later. But Jaws began as a troubled production that went way over budget and made Spielberg fear for his job. Here, we'll take a look at 10 things you never knew about Jaws. If you enjoyed this video, please like it, share it with your friends, and subscribe to MovieWeb to keep up with the conversation about all of the things we love. A shark by any other name. Perhaps some of the best known behind the scenes trivia from Jaws is the nickname the cast and crew gave to the 25 foot great white shark at the movie center, which was played by three full scale mechanical models. Bruce. Yes, Bruce. The nickname was a good natured tribute to Spielberg's lawyer, Bruce Raymer, who has represented the filmmaker for decades. After numerous malfunctions resulted in repeated production delays, Spielberg devised another nickname for the shark too, the great white turd. A what? The famous score. Who hasn't sat down at a piano at some point and tapped out the sinister two note theme from Jaws? A deceptively simple piece of music filled with dread and foreboding. Well, the first time composer John Williams tickled in on the ivories in front of Steven Spielberg, the director thought he must be joking. That's not funny, that's not funny at all. The director would later credit the theme with much of the movie's success. Jaws marked the second collaboration between Spielberg and Williams, and but one of the composer's many famous themes, which include Star Wars, Superman the Movie, and Indiana Jones. John Williams and the London Symphony Orchestra, everybody. The other chief Brodies. Roy Scheider, who improvised the film's most famous line, You're gonna need a bigger boat. actually wasn't the producer's first choice for Chief Martin Brody. Among those courted were Robert Duvall, who reprised his role as Tom Hagen in The Godfather Part II the year before Jaws, and screen legend Charlton Heston, the other Captain Quince. Robert Duvall wasn't the only Godfather cast member who could have been in Jaws. Sterling Hayden, who played corrupt Irish-American cop Captain McCluskey in The Godfather, was offered the role of Captain Quinn. Before Robert Shaw was cast, Producers also went after World War II veteran Lee Marvin, famous for playing various hard-boiled soldiers, cowboys, and police detectives in film and television. $10,000 for me by myself. For that you get the head, the tail, the whole damn thing. The other Matt Hoopers. Before Richard Dreyfuss was cast as marine biologist Matt Hooper, there were discussions with Jeff Bridges, who later starred in 2010 Spielberg-produced True Grit. The studio also reportedly wanted Jan Michael Vincent, but Spielberg fought for Dreyfus, though he had to do much convincing of the actor himself along the way. Just, I want to be sure. You want to be sure. We all want to be sure, okay? The Shrunken Shark Cage. Cage goes in the water. You go in the water. Shark's in the water. Our shark. A second unit captured real-life footage of sharks off the coast of Australia, but since the sharks were much smaller than the movie's title villain, they used a deceptively smaller shark cage, with a wetsuit-clad 4'9 former jockey standing in as Hooper. You got any better suggestions? Speaking of real sharks, the production flew in a 13-foot tiger shark caught off the coast of Florida to use for the scene where the townspeople string up a shark on the dock thought to be the shark. And I am not going to stand here and see that thing cut open and see that little Kettner boy spill out all over the dock. The real-life locals were unable to catch a shark that big, but flying one in had its problems too. By the time they were filming, that shark corpse was going rotten. Hooper's Love Affair In order to keep the story lean and mean, Spielberg tossed out different subplots from the source material. In the novel, Hooper has an affair with the chief's wife, Ellen, played by Lorraine Gray, who returned for Jaws 2 and Jaws the Revenge. Hooper dies in the book. The love affair for the Richard Dreyfuss character may have been cut, but so was his death. I don't have to take this abuse much longer. Hooper's death in the book made it into the script, but not the finished cut. That second unit in Australia captured fantastic footage of the sharks attacking the empty shark cage, so Hooper was allowed to escape in the film so they could make use of it, rather than having the shark bite through it and kill him as originally planned. A few more differences. There are a number of other changes from the book. Here are a few of them. Amity is a town in Long Island in the book, not New England. Brody is a local, not an outsider. The Brodies have three kids, not two. Quint gets his leg caught in a harpoon rope and drowns. The shark dies of exhaustion rather than from an explosion. We hope you learned something from this look at 10 things you never knew, or at least maybe never knew, about Jaws. There are a number of great Jaws documentaries out there to satiate your shark-like craving for more information about the endlessly rewatchable blockbuster thriller. Like many Reddit users, we highly recommend The Shark Is Still Working, the 
documentary is a labor of love from J. Michael Roddy, who helped create Jaws Fest on Martha's Vineyard. It includes sit-down interviews with Spielberg, Dreyfus, John Williams, the late David Brown and Richard Zanuck, and the last interview with author Peter Benchley before he passed away. Scheider even offered to narrate, recording all of his parts just a few months before he died. If you enjoyed this look at 10 things you never knew about Jaws, please like it and share it with your friends, and subscribe to MovieWeb to keep up with the conversation about all of the sharks we love.